Welcome to this open SAP course, Migrating Data to SAP S4HANA using the Migration Cockpit. My name is Claudia Gem. I'm from the product management of the data transformation and data migration team based in Waldorf. My colleagues and I will guide you through this three-week course, and I'm happy to start with this very first unit, introducing the data migration. To get a first overview, let's have a look at the learning objectives of this course. In the first week, we turn the focus on migration of data using the staging tables approach. In addition to that, we explain insights of using the migration object modeler. By end of this week, you will be able to explain what are the data migration requirements and what are the tools to support you. You will get an overview of what are the different steps during a migration process and how to use the tool SAP S4HANA Migration Cockpit by using the staging approach. Overall, you will get a better understanding on special topics that are valid for SAP S4HANA and SAP S4HANA Cloud Private Edition. Furthermore, you learn how to work with a migration object modeler in a staging project. One additional remark, please check also the Open SAP course Migrating Data to SAP S4HANA Cloud Public Edition. This course focuses on SAP S4HANA Cloud Public Edition and provides deep dives into migrating data using the staging tables. In week two of this course, we will introduce a direct transfer approach in the SAP S4HANA Migration Cockpit. And during the third week, you will learn the functionalities of the Migration Object Modeler for this direct transfer. We have a big bunch of topics for you. Let's start. In this first unit, we explain the data migration requirements in a new implementation scenario. We have a look at the different supporting tools for your data migration. And finally, you will have a first overview about the migration cockpit and its functionalities. SAP S4HANA comes with three different transition scenarios. We have the system conversion, the selective data transition, and the new implementation. The two distinct products provided by SAP are SAP S4HANA Cloud Public Edition and SAP S4HANA Cloud Private Edition, which compromises also SAP S4HANA on-premise. I will not go into detail in the different scenarios, but it is important to know that the SAP S4HANA Migration Cockpit is positioned in the new implementation environment. What's, what does it mean? The new implementation means to start with a new SAP S4HANA system or an SAP S4HANA system in a cloud deployment, which is highly standardized with pre-configured business processes. As customer, you might overhaul your business processes and adopt new cloud solution in the private cloud or even on-premise environment. And you only want essential master data and transactional data from the existing solution. The best practice processes in the new implementation scenario deliver the latest industry best practices and continuous innovation. During this week, we will focus on how you will get your master data and transactional data that's needed to run your business processes into the new system. Let's have some thoughts on the data migration itself. You decided to go with SAP S4HANA or SAP S4HANA Cloud Private Edition. This means you have defined the organizational structure and completed product-specific configurations. Now the question is, what do you need to run your business processes? Answer, data, master and transactional data. To get the data in, this is what we call data migration. Data migration is a process of selecting, preparing, extracting and transforming data from one computer storage system to another. Additionally, 
the validation of migrated data for completeness and decommissioning of legacy data storage are considered part of the entire data migration process. Data migration is a key consideration for any system implementation, upgrade or consolidation and it's typically performed in such a way as to be as automated as possible, freeing up human resources from tedious tasks. This brings us now to the new topic, your data migration requirements. What are your requirements in regard of data migration? What are the source systems of your data? Which type of source systems are in place? Do you have a central master data management? And further, on which data is needed from your source system to operate in the SAP S4 HANA the way you want? Another question is, migrate the data as is, or is there a need to transform them on the fly? Are there any changes needed? Is there any improvement in the data quality necessary? And the team, who needs to be involved? Who can make the decisions needed? And who are the major stakeholders in your data migration project? A lot of questions to be considered, right? The goal of a data migration project is not simply to move and transform data from one system to another. It is to ensure that the moved data is high of quality, is fit for use and supports the underlying business processes and operational goals of the organization. In the next slides you find resources that supports you. There are different sources of information to support you in your data migration process. First, there are the SAP Activate methodology, our roadmap viewer, which covers the guidance for your digital transformation. You get an overview of activities in the different phases of the roadmap. You can view and download all the assets and accelerators which are relevant for your specific situation. Second, you can use the Process Navigator to consume the SAP best practices. It will enable you to optimize your project with ready-to-run business processes. Last but not least, our data migration landing page in the SAP Help Portal. Here you can find all materials related to the migration cockpit. For example, the documentation, trainings and deep dives. Let's have a look at the landing page for our migration topic. This is our landing page. Here you can find all relevant data migration topics and uh, related links. So on the left hand side, you have separated into the different approaches of our migration cockpit, which I will explain later, the single activities, functionalities and phases. So you can go through the complete process by your own. In addition, we have several focus topics on the right hand side. First of all, the product assistant where you can find more information on how the migration cockpit is built up. You have the object related information, which will also topic in the uh, later stage of the course where you can jump in into the migration object documentation. Further on, we have trainings and education. Here we can um, highlight the training materials where you can have deep dive of single special topics. The newsletter and the development news gives you the latest new functionalities, updates on the migration cockpit. Besides the how-tos and further information, I also want to highlight the SAP community where you can find access to the worldwide users of the SAP S4 HANA migration cockpit. You can exchange, you can ask questions, you give your feedback or any other experience on working in the data migration area with the cockpit. Please feel free to join this landing page in addition to the other 
sources I have explained. And now we go back to the slides. We recommend using this pool of information and guidance already when starting with preparation for migration. Knowing all the insights and opportunities help to save costs and time during such a project. Let's have a look at the main capabilities of our migration cockpit. The SAP S4 HANA migration cockpit is an out-of-the-box solution. It is included in the SAP S4 HANA licenses and shipment. As soon as you have your S4 HANA system in place, you can start working with the migration cockpit. As user, you will be guided through the complete migration process, starting with the selection of migration objects, which is your migration scope, executing the mapping tasks, the simulation, and finally the real migration run at the end. The migration cockpit covers the automated mapping logic between source and target system. Coming from any legacy system, the data will be assigned automatically to the data structure of the S4 HANA data model. Providing such a migration tool should lower your migration time and costs. And as long as you keep working with the standard objects, no development skills is required. If you have additional requirements for your migration content, there is a modeling environment available where you can create or adapt migration objects to your own needs. The migration object modeler is topic starting in unit five of this week. You have already learned the complete migration process is integrated in our SAP Activate methodology, where you can find guidance to support you during your migration project. The pre-configured migration content, meaning our migration objects, covers all the necessary migration business objects you will need to apply your business processes in your system. Let's step into the migration process. You see here an overview about the different steps. You start with selecting the migration objects. In the on-premise environment, you have listed all available migration objects and you can choose which are relevant for your project. The second and at the same, same time big step is to get the data relevant for the load in the target system. For this activity, you use in the staging approach the template files which are provided for each single migration object. We have a closer look in the next unit. The third step is map and transform data. If you have the requirement to rename or renumber single objects, you have an action point here. For example, you define a new cost center hierarchy and need to transform them from old to new. This is part of the mapping task in the migration cockpit. As we use the standard APIs to post the data into SAP S4 HANA, all logical checks are performed to guarantee consistent data. During the simulation, data is not posted yet to the database, only simulated, and in this phase you can check if the objects have all the necessary information so that they can be processed by the underlying API. In case of errors, for example, a field entry has wrong format or a mandatory field is blank, you can correct them and run the simulation again until all errors are solved. As final step, you execute the migration. All these different process steps summarize a technical migration project, which is created in the migration cockpit. In this first week, we focus on the approach to migrate dating using staging tables. In short, just staging table approach. But we have two different approaches available in our migration cockpit. Using staging tables means the user is responsible for the provisioning of the source data. The data will be stored in the so-called staging tables, which are created automatically in the SAP HANA DB depending on each single migration object used in a migration project. To get the data in, the staging tables will be populated by using XML or CSV template files or either ETL tools. 
The staging tables approach can be used to migrate data from any legacy system. In week two, my colleagues Martina and Heike will present and explain the second approach, migrate data directly from SAP system. In short, just direct transfer approach. This is for customers and partner having an ABAP-based SAP source system in place. Having an RFC connection ready between the ERP source and the S4 HANA or S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition, the data will be selected automatically. This means the migration cockpit takes over the task of source data selection. For this, we have predefined selection criteria in place which vary depending on the different source system. This in detail and how to deal with different migration scenarios you will learn in the next week. You have already heard about the migration object. What is a migration object? Each migration object represents a business entity in your S4 HANA system. They are delivered by SAP-based uh, based on best practice configuration and ready for immediate use. We categorize them in master data and transactional data. And if we are talking about the migration content, then we talk about the sum of all migration objects available in the migration cockpit. Next week, my colleague Martina will explain this slide in more detail when you already have a better understanding of the overall migration process. For what purpose the migrating cockpit is designed? It is an initial data load tool in the new implementation scenario. We only load master data and open transaction data. Please keep in mind, historical data are not covered in a greenfield environment. We ensure the full coverage of the migration objects for best practice processes. What are out of scope? It is not built to keep data in sync across systems, so there is neither data replication nor continuous exchange of data between systems. Data cleansing is also not part of the migration cockpit. It is currently not supported to migrate data directly from SAP S4 HANA to SAP S4 HANA or SAP S4 HANA Cloud. A few more additional words on the migration of historical data. Why do we not move historical data in a new implementation scenario? The migration cockpit is designed for a new implementation, which means starting with new clean business processes and leaving the old world behind. From a functional perspective, the S4 HANA or S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition does not require any historical data in order to work correctly. To make it more transparent, do you remember the last time you had to move house? Which of all these boxes full of not required things did you really unpack in your new house? We are starting in a new implementation area, meaning you probably make a business process re-engineering and start from scratch. In addition to this, you see some examples to make it even more understandable. The migration of closed documents leads to postings which are already included in the balances. There are simply no open items for those documents on anymore. Or for partially open items, only the remaining quantities or values should be migrated. Now we have heard a lot about the migration process, the requirements and the migration cockpit to cover all these topics. But there are some general considerations which needs to be reflected. Check and validate all the factors which might have impact on any decisions. For instance, how many data needs to be moved and possibly transformed. Plan sufficient business downtime for the data load. Define the scope of data, for instance, all master data relevant for an automated migration. Or is there any manual work planned? Review the data quality in your source system and plan data cleansing if necessary as early as possible. Check your customizing. This is a precondition to load the different migration objects properly in the target system. 
You see, the decision on how data should be transferred from the source legacy system to the new S4HANA system should be done as early as possible. With this slide, our first unit ends. Now you understand why data migration is so important. You are aware of how the SAP Activate methodology supports you and how to find further additional information. And you have now an overview about the migration process in the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit. Data migration is one key task during the transition to SAP S4HANA. Unfortunately, it is often underestimated and it can't be done by just pressing a button. Make sure to understand your data migration requirements early and plan for it accordingly. In our next unit, I will demonstrate the described process in a system. Many thanks for your attention and see you soon.